Hey everybody, Mr. Boo here, and today we're going to talk about mountain building. Now, if you watched my last uh, city update, you'll remember that I um, had determined that, you know what, I need some mountains in Bricksburg, and this corner right here is the perfect place to do that. And so uh, the last couple of weeks, I've been spending a lot of time building and rebuilding and designing and laying out the mountainscape for this, this whole area. And what you see in front of you is kind of the result of those last two weeks. Um, and it's still evolving as we go. <laughs> There's going to be another big change coming to Bricksburg soon um, that's going to make all this kind of come together. But I'll talk about that in a minute. Now, um, there's a million different ways to build mountains. Um, you know, there's, and if you look online, you can see examples on Instagram or Flickr of uh, some like gorgeous mountainscapes that people have made. Um, it's just amazing. I encourage you to go look online. Just type Lego Mountain MOC and or just Lego Mountain and just start going through the pictures and you'll see some incredible designs and get really good ideas too. Um, so for my mountain building, um, I try to keep it somewhat economical uh, because this, as you can imagine, takes up a lot of bricks really fast and it can get pretty crazy the higher you go and the bigger you get. Um, and so the primary foundation for all of my mountains is the burp. The big ugly rock piece. Now you can get these on Lego bricks and pieces. You can get them on Bricklink. You can find them from, they came in a lot of different sets over the years. Um, this is an infinitely useful piece for me um, for a number of reasons. A, because it's, it's fairly inexpensive as far as Lego goes. You can pick these up for under $3. Uh, if you shop around, you can find them even cheaper than that. Um, also they save on weight because they're hollow inside. Now I actually built one of these out of bricks once cause I was curious and I think it's about 10 to 20, 10 to 20 bricks actually goes into making one of these if you wanted to build it out of bricks. Now that adds like almost triple the weight of this single piece that's hollow inside. That helps you save on weight. And then also the third thing is that it gives you a, a lot of, um, structural rigidity to the mountains because these kind of interlock with each other and it provides a very strong foundation for the rest of your mountain. So I uh, highly recommend using these. And they actually come in different sizes as well. So this is the standard one that I use. Um, but they also have corner burps, which are a little tricky to use because they don't quite line up as you would expect, especially when you're doing like a slope, which I'm going to show you in just a second. And then they also have over here these smaller uh, pyramid-shaped burps that you can see here. Um, they're a little narrower than the standard ones and they're a little more peaky. So they're, they're actually squatter and taller than the standard burps that I use. Uh, but these are useful for like more of the mountain peaks and for um, like odds and ends if you need to fit strange corners and weird pieces like that as well. Now, I'm going to spin over here real quick to show you. If you remember, this um, was my very first mountain. And this mountain actually used to sit in Ninjago land, actually right over here in the corner behind the Temple of Jitsu. So this is my very first attempt at building a mountain. I learned a lot building this thing um, because it <laughs> it was really challenging to do um, because it fit in the corner and also because I primarily use these corner burps, which um, again, I mentioned, they don't fit together quite like you would expect, and especially when you're going at a slope. And so as you get further down the mountain, they actually like separate more and more and you have to fill it in with a lot of filler bricks. Still it works and it looks pretty cool. I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. Um, but that wasn't quite gonna cut it for what I had envisioned for Bricksburg or the main part of the city of Bricksburg anyways. And so what you see is the results of that is over here. Now this one in the back was my very first um, design that I started working on. It's a tall, big mountain. Um, and if you remember, there was another like skinny mountain with, mountain with a tunnel, a lower one here. That's changed. <laughs> um, but first, I want to talk about this little guy right here. So this actually was a redesign of the corner piece down here that meets up with the main part of the mountain here, which then transitions into the big mountain there. Um, but I'm going to show you this because this gives you a really good idea for how the mountains are built. And the first surprise when I turn this guy around is that it's hollow inside. So the, um, this saves, again, saves on bricks, it saves a ton of money. Um, and you're able to do this because, again, of the burp. Because of the burp, and you can actually see, if I, I'm gonna slide it just a little bit, like edge on. So you can actually see how they're, they stack with each other and how they, they kind of like form a really rigid structure that's really sturdy. And you can see there's no supports in this. It's just freestanding. And it's pretty, I mean, it's not going anywhere, even though it's starting to tilt. Now, if you do get 
much higher than that, you're going to want to put a support beam somewhere along here to keep it from like tilting over. But this design works really good. It's really efficient. It's quick. Um, and it's easy to get height and to build up your foundation for your mountains if you follow this technique. Now, the other thing I'll point out real quick is that uh, you'll notice that I stagger them. So this establishes the rock face, the slope going up the mountain. And you, so you can see how it gradually kind of slopes inward. That's just simply achieved by stacking the burps and the offsetting them. So I have them offset by two. You can offset them by three. You can offset them by one. You can vary it if you want to have a more random, you know, looking mountain face. There's lots of different things that you can do. Um, but this this piece right here, I kind of saved this one because it gives you a pretty good idea. It's like a cross section of the mountain. So you get a feel. And then what I do on the on the surface, because otherwise, like if you just look at a standard like burp, this is pretty boring, right? There's not much to it. And then they also kind of all look the same if you're stacking them. So what I do is I add slopes randomly. So these are like uh, like two by three slopes, uh, one by two slopes, all kinds of just random bits and pieces. I'll add one by ones just randomly on there, two by twos, and just kind of vary it and make it random, which you can really kind of see the randomness over here, how it's just, and that gives, it breaks up the, the flat face of the rocks, but it also, um, it makes it just a little bit of texturing and it gives it a little more life. It looks a little more realistic, in my opinion. So, um, so yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, the big mountain. Now let's talk about, let's talk about that big mountain. That's actually going to be redesigned soon. Um, the reason why, so here's the issue with mountains you guys be aware of. And again, we'll go back to the cross section here. So as you, as you see, obviously, as you like build your slope of your mountain, you're getting further and further back. So your distance, so your, as you go higher and as you go up the slope, because mountains are naturally, you know, sloping, they, um, you start to eat up a lot of real estate. You can already see in this one, I'm actually over the edge of the base plate there, because this one was actually overhanging here, so that was okay. Um, so initially, in this area of, of the city here, I was going to go, uh, I started out as, at 10 studs deep. Well, 10 studs doesn't get you a whole lot of mountain height. It gets you maybe like three or four of these burps and then you're done, you're, you're tapped out. Um, so then I went to 16, which is where I'm at currently. 16 is better. Um, this mountain is, the big one in the back here is built on 16. And actually I wanna show you this real quick because this is kind of cool. So this mountain is actually a cheater because there's gonna be modulars in front of it and to preserve bricks, it actually sits on a platform. So you can, you can see that if I get in there. Um, so it actually sits about um, three burps high and because you're never going to see those because the modulars are going to block that view. So it's like a little tricky bit. You can save on um, you can save on pieces that way by doing that. But um, that mountain is only 16 deep. Now you're going to see. So what happens is I'm able to start at the 16 in the, in the, at the bottom where I just was. And as I go up the mountain face and let's zoom in here it's getting closer and closer to the wall. Closer and closer I go, it's up to the top. Now, about one, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. I was able to get six burps high before I hit the wall. <laughs> I was like, oh great, that's not good. It's because, and then I'm basically limited. So what I had to do, if you look at the, at the, the peak, you'll see that's all bricks up there. So those are all bricks. Um, I had to build that up using bricks. And actually, here's an example of that here. This was actually the peak for the lower mountain, if you remember. So this was that peak. So this is just two studs deep. And it's, you can see how high, I mean, it's pretty high. And this is actually isn't even the top. I actually have a top on it. I took, I just preserved this for now. Um, but this actually sat at the top of the mountain. And so this is how I got some more height to the mountain. It's the same idea up there. Now, the only issue with that, and you can kind of see it at the top, which I'm not too too fond of, is these really long lines that, um, you can see these really long lines here of bricks where, so it's textured, it's not just flat bricks, but it's also not sloping. So it's basically a vertical face at that point, which some mountains have vertical faces, but maybe not quite that high. So, you know, and I wanted a really big mountain. So I'm like, you know, maybe 16 studs deep isn't so bad. So what I figured out, and what I'm actually going to be doing this coming week is, again, about... So th these tables that I'm on right here, they're not the standard size. These are the smaller IKEA tables. They're not as deep. 
because initially, uh, you know, I don't know why I did that. But anyways, I got, these are, these are only like two, two about, well, they're about six. I can make them two base plates and a 16 by 16 base plate um, deep. So two 32s and a 16. Um, but these, if you remember, the rest of my city is all three 32 base plates deep. So I have a 30, 32, a 32, and a 32 deep. And so that gives me a lot more depth. So what I'm gonna do is actually order another one of the tables at the proper depth. That's gonna go right here. And so then what I'll be able to do is I'll be able to have a 32 deep mountain. The modulars, which you can kind of get the idea and then the road in front of it, and it's all gonna fit nicely in this area. So I'm gonna be completely redesigning this as soon as my table arrives in the mail. Um, so let's show you, this is the new, new design right here. This is the big mountain. So you can see this one is 32 studs deep, and you can see already how much taller I've gotten compared to, well, what was there, uh, which the parts for that are all in here now. But it's already, the, the small mountain is already almost caught up to the big mountain here. The deeper you can go, the better off you'll be with mountain building if you can. Um, you can certainly do this kind of stuff or like what I've done there. I mean, that's a pretty tall mountain. That's pretty impressive. I think it's cool, but I wanted something even grander. So for me, it was worth it to stretch it and go to like 32 studs deep because now the small mountain is going to be, you know, I don't even know how tall, where I'm going to end up. Probably not too much taller, but I'm going to end up somewhere around here. And then that big mountain is going to go almost nearly up to the corner of the, of the roof, hopefully the ceiling, hopefully there or probably like maybe like another halfway here. So that's the advantage of the, keep in mind that when you're designing, that's the advantage of having more depth to work with. You can go a lot, um, you know, you can, you can go a lot taller with your mountain face without having those sheer vertical drops like I have um, on the big mountain now. So there's a lot more to do. Um, hopefully this gives you a little bit of insight into how I do my mountain building. Oh, and then I'll just real quick here. This is another example. This is just real simple. This is just the, the rock face on the side here of, of the city. So these are just, um, this is two burps high with some rock, a little bit of rock detail at the top there, um, just to mesh up and line up with the height of the city proper, like the platforms here. Um, and then this corner piece, which may or may not stay, I may redesign it a little bit, I don't know. Um, again, that is, um, you can see that's kind of how I made it a little a little more fleshed out and it's, it kind of wraps around a little bit and then I added this little retaining wall for the mountain tunnel coming out to kind of keep the rocks back. Um, that's just another example of how you can design. They're all built exactly the same way. The trick and the key to my mountains is the burp. So the more burps you have, the better. Um, and even if you don't have a lot, you can use some of them to at least get the foundation going. And then from there, you can just keep on building upwards, upwards and onwards. Um, so thanks for watching. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Let me know what you think. Let me know, you know, how do you guys build your mountains? How do you, um, go about, you know, have you attempted to build a mountain? If not, why not? What's holding you back? Um, it's, it's fun. It's challenging, <laughs> but it, it, it's, it's definitely a challenge. I mean, this is my version 5.0 of the tunnel. Um, this one's about to be like version 3.0. Um, but it's, it's, pr I think the end result is going to be pretty cool. Um, once I get all the landscaping on it and the plants and, you know, all the other stuff that I need to do. So that's that. Thanks for watching. And I'll be back soon with a city update, hopefully uh, in the next week or so. All right.